We want to quickly give you our current outlook and what we have to see for each of the teams starting with the bottom here. We're going with the 0-10 Shanghai Dragons. 20 seconds on the clock. Monty, what do we know about this squad? I think that even if you see this team make some roster moves, that they're still going to be last place in the standings no matter what. It's going to be so hard for them to dig themselves out of the 0-10 hole, especially with that map differential, that even if they start winning a couple of matches, I'm not sure they're actually going to legitimately move up in the standings, even if they get better as a team. 40-0. Wow. Let's go 40-0. Oh, harsh, I don't think it's going to be that bad. Three harsh. bonus harsh. seconds. We're moving on. You can't get one more win than the Florida Mayhem. They're currently coming in at 1-9, Dylan. Uh, well, Matt, why don't you tell us about Florida instead? Yeah. <laughs> the Mayhem, I'm the Mayhem expert here. Not, you are. I don't want to take that away from you ever. I think with the Mayhem adding some new players and their supports able to go back to the heroes that they like to play, I think they'll get just a little bit better. I don't think they make it out of that bottom of the standings. I do think they improve greatly off that 1-9 record, though. Let me read this one properly. <laughs> Dilla, you're coming up next. Is Dallas Woo. Fuel. They're coming in at just 3-7. and seven. What's wrong with this squad? Well, Dallas, the thing is, is I want these guys to kind of just keep doing what they're doing, honestly. And I don't mean losing. I mean retooling things. I mean going ahead and experimenting, finding what works. I like that they're kind of saying, hey, we know we can sort of win in this way that sort of worked for us over time. We need to move away from that if we're going to be successful. So I'd say do that. And um, we're yeah. moving away from you oh, on to Mr. X. And we're taking it to the San Francisco Shock. Well, look, like a lot like what I talked about with the Florida Mayhem, Dak can play Lucio again. So I think just taking him off of Mercy and allowing him to play Lucio can help with, you know, Sleepy, obviously, who can play Ana or Zen. Makes this team a, a, you know, an instant threat, I think. You know, Baby Bay had a very good stage one. I thought Dante got better as the stage went on as well. I expect San Fran to be much better in stage two. All right, let's keep it going on to the Purple People Eaters, the Gladiators, Mr. Right. Dilla. Gladiators. Well, it goes without saying, Asher, don't fall off the map anymore. That's a good thing. Uh, Goose, Big Goose, unleash this guy on the Lucio. We know he's got it in him. He's going to be awesome on that hero in the new meta and then protect Shaz better. Play around Shaz more. This guy is a huge playmaker on the Zenyatta, so why not make that more of a focus in how you operate? Monty, let's keep it rolling here in one second. On to the Philadelphia Fusion. What's in store for Stage 2? As I said earlier, I think this is going to be a team on the rise. They're already 6-4. and four. The meta is going to suit them better as they can play aggressively, more effectively, without the Mercy Resurrections in the last line. We've seen great stuff from Shadowburn and Carpe so far. So as they get their team work together, now they're going to be able to actually in-house scrim that all 12 members are in the area as well. Better practice, better dive. On to the next one, Mr. X, we're to the top half of the league. Let's talk about the Boston Uprising. Yeah, I think Boston's going to benefit with their aggressive play style greatly in Stage 2 with the new meta change. And I also think you'll be able to rotate those off tanks a little bit better than you did in Stage 1. Note can play a lot of the D.Va. Kalios can focus on those Zarya maps. Gamsu can play whether Winston or Reinhardt. It's going to be very strong for Boston. On to number five on our leaderboard, Doa. Tell me about the Soul Dynasty. All right, Soul Dynasty, what you need to do is do the Lunatic High. Rely on your supports, rely on Zunba, and maybe make a bit of an adjustment in that main tank role. I'm not sure if Miro is going to be able to handle the Reinhardt again if we move back into that kind of meta. At least they have uh, better options for DPS right now. So I think these guys are going to be good again, but I think they need to kind of fall back on that Lunatic High Core and play that style. Keep your eyes on Soul, but you can't count out the Valiant. They were almost into the playoffs for Stage 1. What happens in Stage 2? Well, you know, Puckett, they still have a Genji player. They still have Soon on the Tracer. Another team like Boston, like Philadelphia, that benefits from a dive meta. We didn't see that many different looks from them compositionally, but I'm confident that they can actually start to play around triple tank or dive better. You have agilities and Soon to, to swap onto the third tank if you need. Stage one champions, it was the London Spitfire. They get $100,000. How many more bucks do they make in stage two? What are you expecting, Dylan? Hey, you know, sky's the limit for these guys, and that is not a Spitfire pun. That is just the facts. These guys won stage one. They did get that big prize, and they've got, again, such a huge, diverse lineup. I say start incorporating Rascal a little bit more into this. We know he can play a ton of heroes. This roster hasn't even begun to discover the combinations that are going to win them games. Such a deep lineup, and the same can be said about the Houston Outlaws. But, Monty, it seems they found their core six. What do you expect in stage two? I think they're going to go down in the standings, Pocket. This is another one where even though the Junkrat is still going to be there, Banny playing that Mercy was one of their biggest strengths. And this was a very defense-oriented team. They won maps and they won matches by playing very far back and full holding. They're not going to 
have that opportunity right now. They will be more vulnerable to the dive. They're going down. Finally, Matt, last but not least, it's your favorite squad, and they come from New York. Imagine that. Look, New York is still going to be the top dogs at the end of stage two. I think they just need to leave Mono in the game. You have Mono in at the main tank. We've seen what Mecco can do with whether it's Diva or Roadhog. I think the biggest thing is they need to work on how they can get Pine in the lineup more. We saw it a little bit in, on Junkertown, what he did against London. The guy is so good. They need to play him a little bit more, figure out their lineup. More Pine time. I love that prediction. That's a quick look at what we expect from our teams in Stage 2.